What's up, y'all? This is Moose of Jet Life. You are now watching Nola Zane TV. Okay, so I'm like, tell everyone, basically, I'm like, where are you from? Uh, originally? Yeah. Originally, I'm Palestinian. I'm, I'm I'm from Palestine, but raised in New Orleans. So I've been in New Orleans all my life. So I, I, I as they say, I'm I'm New Orleans to the bone gristle. Okay. So far as like you know, growing up, um, <clears throat> it, were you always on like into, I'm like getting getting on like into the on, like music business. So, I mean, just like every every young kid, you know what I'm saying? You intrigued by music and hip hop. So yeah, early high school days, yeah, I wanted to be a rapper too. But I was like, nah, this this rap ain't for me. So I, I, I had friends that rapped and stuff. So I, I was into it, writing songs and all that. So I was always intrigued into the rap. But my first year in college, uh, I met a guy, Devious D, Dion Norman. And uh, me and him was both freshmen at Xavier. And he was already in a rap deal. So we, I started going to the studio with him, and that kind of put me back into more of the business side of it. So have you ever actually, I'm like, written one, I'm like, rap, and like, oh, yeah, yeah. And, actually, and actually wrapped it in the studio? No, oh, okay. no. We, we wrapped it on the, on, the, uh, on, the high school, on the high school campus, you know? So yeah, we Thought definitely. dropped a song. If, no, if no, I ain't, never, I ain't never dropped one, bro. I'm going to have to go ahead and put, I'm going to have to lay one out there. <laughs> Okay, so far as you know, and but all the years of just you know moving around New Orleans, I'm like, what were you doing actually, like, actually before you actually met? I'm like currency. So before I met currency, originally, like I told you, I met uh, Dion Norman, Devious D. Okay. Uh, and me and him started a record label together called Worth the Weight Recordings. This when I was 17 years old. So I started this label and I and I started learning the process of of music and selling the music. Now, not to not to throw my age out there, but this was <laughs> this was this was when it was a lot tougher. The internet wasn't around for the for the quick uh, MP3s and WAV files and all that. This we was pressing music on cassette tapes. Oh, you talking about uh, in the nineties? Yeah, yeah. DJ Khaled was a DJ at Odyssey Records, and he was going to Xavier at the time. I was at Xavier with him at the time. So this is back. This is a good while ago, bro. This is this is TT Tucker, and this is uh. Sporty T, and this is that time that Bounce was first first starting off. You know, UNLV was was starting the bubble, so it was this was that time, and and uh, Lil Elt would get the gat. You know what I'm saying? All that that era. So that's when I started off, and me and him had a record label together. Then we kind of d- dissolved that. We kind of went our separate ways. But at that time, I had Fiend, who was with No Limit, before that he wasn't with No Limit, he was 14 years old, he signed to work the weight with us. Then uh, things happened, he ended up getting a deal with No Limit, he went to No Limit, he came back, you know, probably got him a, a gold plaque, almost platinum, did a lot of work with them. When he decided to leave No Limit, he came back to me, was like, I need a manager. So that's when I left the record label side and started the management side. So me and him started going on the road and building more and more music and doing what he was doing and, and getting that going. And I already knew Jacetis, well that was his name, which is uh, Mr. Marcello is, is what a lot of people call him now. So he was signed to us also on Work the Weight. So Currency is Mr. Marcello brother. So he was young and he was hanging in the Magnolia, I just say at his house, and he knew me from there. So when, to jump to the, the where I met Currency at, Currency used to come to my car shop in the East. You know, me and him already had a good relationship as far as friends. But when he signed that deal with Young Money, Cash Money, he asked me to come on as, as his manager. So that's where me and his relationship started as far as on the business music side. Okay. Hey, so let's bring it back, you know, being one CEO, then turning, I'm like, into a manager. Like, everyone wants to be a manager, but they don't realize 
I don't know how hard it is, and they don't also know like artists actually turn on their managers too. Oh yeah, so, like, I want it's, you kind of like you know it would chime in upon that. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough as far as being a manager because you artists don't understand uh, everybody's job position. The difference with me coming from record label management, my whole idea was just to win. So I did duties that weren't necessarily manager duties. A lot of people want their manager to make their career. It's not the manager's job. A manager is to manage your business that you create. You know what I'm saying? He's not here to get your songs on the radio. Yeah, he wants to help. He wants to try that. He wants to help you uh, reach your goals. But you can't expect your manager is not your record label. So he's also not your investor. The manager's here to help you on the business side of your career. So people get that confused and, and think a manager's supposed to do a lot. Then when things not happening or once something does happen, which is even worse, when you start do get a little bubble, then you got all these other guys coming in your ear telling you, you know, I could do this for you and I could do that for you. Then, it, then the test of time comes where you, what's your relationship with your artist? And you end up leaving the manager and he didn't did a lot for you and got you in a certain position and then you left him. The the good thing with me and Currency's relationship and me as well as any other artists I've ever dealt with, we've had a bigger than a manager or a record label deal. It was a friendship first, you know, so we built as friends and we trust each other. So the biggest plus is is to have a relationship where you trust the artist or the artist trusts you as the manager or vice versa, how it goes. But trust is the biggest issue. So, you know, like, I'm like creating a brand. I'm like Jet Life. I'm like, what year was this? So, Currency was with, with Cash Money, Young Money in, in 0405. Uh, he decided that he wanted to leave, I believe it was around 06, 07. Um, at which point he started doing some stuff with uh, Terry Kennedy, who was a, a skateboarder out of L.A., and and they started to do like a group, and it was Fly Society. So everybody knew the group was Fly Society. That just didn't work out business-wise. Uh, it wasn't organized, and he decided, like, that's not working. And originally he started um, FS Jets, which was Fly Society Jets. And then we was like, you know, the name is cool, but it just don't ring like it should. So we switched it from FS Jets to Jet Life. That was around, I'm going to say 08, where it really first started. Uh, and then, you know, it, it probably legally formulated as a label in 09. And, you know, we've been going ever since. So like being one, you know, full... I mean, it's like full on an independent label. Like, like, can you can you tell someone if who's like out there if we think about starting an independent label? Like, because everybody just think it's easy. Like, for us marketing, getting your brand out there, and just do, getting on tours and different things like that. Nah, definitely. In independent, um, independent labels is is a lot tougher because at the end of the day, you're spending your own money. You're independent, uh, and regardless if you're independent or national it still costs the same you know uh and sometimes it costs more i was i was troubled and i won't put no names out there but uh one time there was a particular person that we was trying to do some business with with another artist not with currency and we was like you know we got this record we want you to help support it and he gave us a price he was like well you know for me to support it it's it's five hundred dollars you know, for me to support this. And he was talking through my representative because I didn't want to go myself. Even though I knew this person, I didn't want to go by myself. I wanted my representative to reach out just to keep it business. Just so you understand that I'm being business. I want you to re represent this and, and, and really put your support behind it. So I'm coming at you just like anybody else will come at you. And this person turned around once they found out what the record was and who the record was he was like, oh, it's local. So if it's a local artist, I charge 1500 And I just thought that was the most ass-backward-ass shit. Like, 
how you charge local artists more than you charge national artists. Like, and these local dudes is in your face every day, and they're the one, if we're trying to really build this New Orleans music scene, then you should really charge local artists less. If it's a quality record. I'm not saying take a record that's trash and promote it, but if it's a good record and you want somebody to put a little money in your pocket, that's understandable. But show a little more love because it's a local scene, and the, the bigger we build this New Orleans scene, it's going to be the better for everybody across the board, not just artists, artists, producers, DJs, corporations. Everything gets better just by building the scene. So, you know, speaking on just, you know, the scene of New Orleans music scene, like, far as you can see it, I'm like, what do you think that it, I'm like, it's actually going to actually take them, you know, to actually, I'm like, get to, you know, all that next level. I think first, I mean, we, we got to learn how to work together. You know, artists artists gotta gotta learn how to to help each other as artists. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, New Orleans is just known, and it's not just not music. It's it's across the board. We're a tough city. Everybody's a gangster. Nobody, you know, nobody's friends with other people, cliques, and all that. So what happens is we we don't necessarily hate somebody else, but we like, oh, he not from my side, so. I can't do nothing with him. We got to do that. We got to learn how to work together, one, as artists. Uh, as producers, same thing. We got to be able to... Don't get too business on when you know you're still trying to get the way you're trying to go. You know what I'm saying? Understand where your position and where you're trying to go. And sometimes you have to uh, give up some things if it's going to help advance your career. Thirdly, we got to get the support from DJs, radio, and any other kind of promotional thing. Media Party clubs. promoters, media, you know, I, I see you do a lot of media with a lot of artists, so that helps for artists to be able to come, come on your platform, do an interview, uh, speak their word, especially when other platforms from, of course, out of town are not going to talk to you because they don't know you and you don't have a big buzz. Until you get a buzz, they don't want to talk to you. But you shine the light on artists that's from the city who may not have a big buzz, but you still agree and and feel like that artist is a is a decent enough artist that you should let the world hear about them. You know, with your platform, you got people from everywhere going to tap in. It's not just here. You go on YouTube, you're going to be anybody who looks up New Orleans music could go to your platform and check out new artists. So that helps. So, I mean, I think that's what we got to do. We got to continue to build like that. We got to be able to make sure that um, the music is heard, you know, and everybody who knows something, I always tell people I'm always open to talk. I'm always open to give you advice. You know what I'm saying? Learn the music business. If you need help, come ask me. I'm going to tell you I'm very approachable. DM me. I, I DM you back. I'm going to be very approachable. Now, no, I'm not trying to sign every artist. It's not against me want not want to work with you, but it's also you got to understand you can't spread yourself thin. So I have a I have a, a a set of artists that I'm invested in as of now. If I keep adding artists, I'm only going to give less time and less time to each person. I would rather give you some advice, help you create what you're trying to create. You keep pushing it, and if it gets to that point. That, that you got that buzz and, and me and you could work together, then we will. If not, if you get another manager and you got to want to know about that, I'm going to tell you about that. Like, that's a good one, a bad one, whatever. I'm going to give you my advice. But you got to take advice and you got to continue to work. A lot of artists will get with either a record label or a manager and now think it's done. They didn't did their part. Now the only part left is sitting in the studio and recording. Now I'm going to give you my music and you're supposed to get me hot. Can't do that. You got to keep pushing till you to you where you want to be. Right. So like, you know, being a manager like being I'm like a part of if the biggest I'm like record label I'm like still in the Orleans. Like if how was it like if, if for you like watching Cash Money grow in, in no limit, Big Boy and all them and like around like the early 90s all the way up. Yeah, it. I mean, it was. I was in that mix. So you know, when 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 Big Boy had their thing popping, 
uh, and cash money had they think popping. They they cash money got an opportunity, which was a blessing for them. They had the music, they had the New Orleans scene on lock. People was was really into it, and they was able to secure a hell of a deal with Universal Music, which really propelled them to to the top. And then they was able to maintain. Uh, you know, like I told you, I had Fiend who went to No Limit, but at the time when he was with us, he went from us, he went to Big Boy, then went to No Limit. So No Limit had their position and had their career, and it went where it was going. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, the the, the label ended up dissolving, the artists separated, and you know, a lot of the artists are still cool, but it, it, it kind of, I think at that time, that era, we was in the bed of making New Orleans a great music city as far as hip hop. We was growing at the same time that Atlanta was growing. Only difference is I feel like we dropped the ball and Atlanta kept going with theirs, you know, and not just on the music scene. It was overall, you know, everybody lives in New Orleans knows New Orleans is really stuck on uh, being historic, you know. You go to this city and compare it to Atlanta. You go to Atlanta, you got skyscrapers. You got these big, beautiful buildings. You come to New Orleans, we got that historic feel, you know. And not to say, I don't know if that's what's stopping us or not, you know. Uh, we have a, a tendency not to let our hip-hop community advance um, because we're such, such considered a, a jazz city. So it's kind of tough when it it's a jazz city and everybody wants to focus on jazz and not understand that the hip-hop community as well as we focus on one genre of hip-hop it's like um if you're not doing bounce music then you don't tend to get either radio love or club love or something like that we're not given a platform for hip-hop artists to really show their worth and, and, and express their music, you know. So I think all that has to change, you know. And, and like I said, we dropped the ball in the 90s and hopefully we can pick it back up and get it moving, you know what I'm saying. So that's, I think, a big reason why me and Currency decided to stay in the city. We love this city, you know. I always tell people, motherfuckers always tell me, why are you, why are you still in New Orleans? I say, I love that raggedy motherfucker. <laughs> but... You know, it, we, we decide to stay here. Yeah, everybody said, why you don't move to Miami? Why you move to Atlanta or L.A. or whatever? I really want to see this, this city grow musically. You know, it's tough sometimes, but I would love to see it grow. And I'd love to be a part of it in a, in a reason why we got that growth. Right. And speaking of, you know, if why New Orleans don't grow like, you know, if I travel to, like, to multiple cities, that was a lot of media and like a lot of people feel like in New Orleans we don't have any like gatekeepers or like you know just people in the industry like like actually actually fully like vouching for the scene of New Orleans like because you know like so many bounce artists to like other music artists it just felt like people come down here and just take from us and they don't yeah. really like give us credit and so how do you feel about that? They they do they do take from us but I think it's also uh it's, it's a lack of hip-hop artists taking advantage of of certain things, as well as certain things that's not available to them down here. Like I said, the music education part. There are musical educational forums that, that come together that, that you could go listen to. I know the, the New Orleans Jazz Foundation does stuff. Uh, the Grammys Foundation does stuff. I don't know if the people are not hearing about it and that's why they're not attending or people just not choosing not to attend. But we have to understand the education in the business side of music to stop people from taking from us as well as in, we got to be able, like I said, it's the biggest part is always to work together and, and understand. So we got to get us another opportunity for like even bounce, you know, I don't have nothing against bounce. I like bounce. The difference is our bounce artists, like you said, they don't succeed to the level that they should be because we let other artists take that sound and blow it up. Nothing against the other artists. 
the other artists doing it and they're doing it well, so it's fine. But we have to find a way to give them the opportunity as well. You know, uh, congrats, Frida just got a Grammy. That's that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but outside of Frida, what other bounce artist has has made it to that big level outside of New Orleans? None that I could think of. You know what I'm saying? And if if, if it is one, I apologize. I just can't think of it. Oh, I'm talking about on a huge scale. You know, Grammys is huge. You know what I'm saying? So the, Oh, Black and Miles is the, uh, you know. Black and Miles producer. is a producer. Right. But I'm thinking on all the oh, sides. Yeah. So yeah, Black and Miles, a producer, is doing his thing. And he's he's growing on that scale. But artist-wise, as far as the actual it's artists, freedom. where the face, the face of somebody who's you looking for, Frida's the only person I could think of. Right. You know? Like, so we need to blow that up. If bounces are seen, then let's let's do it. Right. Bounce need to grow. Like rather than us hearing somebody from from DC or, or Chicago or Detroit or any of these other big cities making a sound that we like, damn, that's a bounce sound. You know what I'm saying? We need to make our own sound expand and grow. Where like I said, the the more artists from the city that are successful on a national scale, the more light they shine on the city. You gotta remember, when one artist shines, labels start looking, that must be a hotbed for music. Everybody knows how it is. West Coast was popping, everybody went to the West Coast and signed West Coast artists. Detroit went to popping, everybody went to Detroit. All the Detroit guys are bubbling. You know what I'm saying? Chicago went to popping, all the Chicago. When's New Orleans turn? I know we had it back in the 90s, but it's time to have it again. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, every, like, you know, we almost right there again. Yeah. We just got to have that have that full, like, you know, powerhouse. Like, we need to be, everybody need to be on game and point. Right. And and, and the thing is, we got all, like I said, it's, it's all about working together. It's all about working together. It's about, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's about putting the music scene on one accord that everybody feels like, all right, this this is what we need to do to 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 make it grow. You know, currency has always been open. What his feature prices for outside of New Orleans and outside of Louisiana artists is different because what he does for New Orleans people, he is, is super cheap, if not free. So we try on our end as well as currency is quick to speak on artists that he likes from the city. When they ask him in interviews about who who you listening to, he'll always throw a New Orleans artist in. That's not necessarily his artist. Not necessarily somebody that's signed to Jet Life. He'll say, "Well, I I like Rob. I like Nino. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I, I, there's a bunch of people that he like. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so he puts those names out there, and as small as it may seem, it's for you to hit me to somebody new always helps. It's always good. Wherever you at, if you outside this city, hit people to the people in the city. Take a listen to this. You know what I'm saying? Listen to this person. Listen to that person. You never know how, how much that helps. All right. So, I just recently, I'm like, did one, I'm like, big deal. I'm like, with the Pelicans. Yeah. So, like, tell people, you know, if the importance of that deal getting done and just like if the impact every day they put on the players in the city of New Orleans. Yeah. So so the Pelican situation was I had some good relationships with some people, uh and that was closely related to the to the Pelicans and they was like they came up with the idea that the Pelicans wanted to do something with uh a lifestyle to kind of bring the people in the in the game itself together you know how new orleans always was we're a big football city we love the saints we love lsu and that's it we don't think about nothing else so it's like how do you get basketball outside of having great athletes that that create that buzz but how do you bring the community together you know so we said well let's let's do an apparel with a, a collab jet life pelicans collab uh and let's build around that so we started that uh, we did a 504 day with the Pelicans last year. Me and Currency decided from then that we would start attending all the games. None to be announced, let everybody know. 
We Pelicans did not give us these tickets. We are going to the Pelicans game because we want to be there. And we are buying these tickets like everybody else. Nothing against Pelicans. We did a closed deal that has nothing to do with the game. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, play, everybody pays to get flow seats. We get that because it shows support. Anytime you watch a major basketball team, some famous person yes, is there. Good. You know what I'm saying? You know, you go to Atlanta, you're going to see Lil Boosie. You're going to see Gucci Man. You're going to see 2 chains sideline. You know what I'm saying? You go to, to the Knicks game, you're going to see Spike Lee. You know what I'm saying? So we got to also develop that. So now currency is going every game. We don't miss a game. You know what I'm saying? Rob Fulnine has been coming. Some of the Saints players been coming. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we build that. We build that community. And we, we, show, we show first the athletes that the city supports you and the city is behind you. What's great with that is we was able to really build a real uh, organic relationship with the players. Like these are not just the players to us now. Like these are good friends. Like we we talk, we text, we hang out, all that. Not talking basketball now, just on some cool shit. And the good advantage of it to, to the team that we have now, we got a really young team that's, that's as good as they are, are grounded and don't mind coming out. They don't mind seeing people and, 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 and touching the city. And I think the city appreciates that. So we touch them back. So, you know, I, I think all that is in, in the idea of growing the city and all this will grow together. The music scene will grow. As long as we have something that shines light on the city, it's going to help all of us. Gotcha. So being in the music industry for over 20 years now, tell us, I'm like, what do you actually like enjoy most about it? And tell us what do you actually um, what do you actually um, hate about it? Um, of course, I enjoy because, I mean, what, you know, in all honesty, I've, I've been blessed to make a living off this music game. Like, I do a lot of stuff, you know. But now the stuff that I used to do for a living is now more my hobby. The stuff, music now is my living. Music pays the bills. So... To able to do what you love and also pay your bills with it is an amazing feeling all in itself. You know what I'm saying? So, I, and I think everybody, you know, wants to do what they love and pay the bills doing that. So, what what could you complain about that? The, the negative part of it is sometimes, of course, being an independent artist is... Uh, seeing your artist not getting the accolades that they deserve because people look at them as and not just speaking in currency of the form but all my artists as well as a lot of artists I see in the city they're they don't get to shine because they're independent and that's the level that I know independence so it, it kind of and I think maybe it's, it, uh, I'm not as boisterous as, as I should be. And I'm, everybody knows I'm, I'm, I'm not a person that sit there and just try and throw weight around. But I do say one thing. Jet Life is the biggest label out of New Orleans that is still in New Orleans. Jet Life has done some amazing things that people may never know and people may not understand we've really changed the independent game and you won't know it till you talk to other artists that's not from here that's also big you know larry june has been a great supporter of jet life currency and him have a great relationship larry june to tell you that he he took our model and, and and went with it you know he he saw what we did a lot of artists we meet that tell us like we see what Jet Life doing, we kind of follow y'all y'all model. So for you to be a model of other labels is you know is a blessing in itself, as well as it shows that what you have done has been successful, and people are taking that that format and trying to become successful using your same way. Right, and yeah, also I'm like give, I'm like I hope, like jobs, 
uh, only to a lot of people. As yeah, well. yeah, definitely. I, I always I tell people I hire within, you know, even with our apparel side, you know, um, we're at a scale that, of course, I could I could bring outside companies that do like fulfillment stuff, and you know, I could have all my stuff shipped somewhere else, and they'll take all. But I, I like I told the guys that do work for me, why would I do that when I could just hire people that I know to do the same thing? and give you an opportunity to make a check uh, as well as I'm a I'm a big supporter of New Orleans I, I rather hire within within the city when I say within so I hire first thing is, is people I got to trust of course because you're dealing with stuff that you have to understand that this may be my vision this may be currency's vision or this may be Fendi or Isis's vision but for me to trust you in there I have to know that it's not necessarily your vision, but you want to support the vision. And hopefully that brings you to that scale to, to, to up. I always, I, the videographers in the city, producers in the city, I always tell them, come on, like, you know, send me some tracks. You know, my artists are going to get on them. You're going to get a bigger shine. You're still going to get paid off your track. No, I'm not about to buy your track. I'm going to keep it a thousand with you. I'm not going to buy it from you. I'm not about to give you an advance because you are like, once again, it's back to the music business. You have to understand the money I give you for your track is just an advance on your royalties. You got to pay that back. That comes out your money. But we're at a scale that I can get production from major producers that don't want to charge you nothing and just want to eat from off the royalties because they believe in what they're doing. So... The other thing is if you're an up and coming producer or videographer or whatever, even media, uh, I mean, you know on your side, you some people will pay you to come do an interview with them. Right. Now, in a, a lot of media groups charge something. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with that because it there's a fee for you to do what you gotta do. You gotta buy your cameras, you gotta edit. If you're gonna do all this all this is going to take a lot of time, you know, to do it. Then how do you pay your bills? I can't be working at McDonald's as well as filming you and editing all this. It's just not going to work out. So it doesn't hurt to charge something, but you're not going to charge what somebody else, a bigger media group per se, charges. So you're going to give back to the artist by giving you a platform at either whether it's free or whether it's so of course I, I'm a, you know I'm gonna just use to use the example because you're here if you say I want to do an interview with currency you're not gonna charge currency because you're gonna be like well currency I know is gonna get my views up because he already has a following and that would be smart on my side to do it for free say you're a videographer I'm a, I want to shoot a video for currency of course, as long as we allow you to tag your video and promote it and currency is getting millions of views on a video, that helps you because people are going to look and say, they don't know whether you charge currency or not. All they know is I like that video. That video is clean, it's shot, the edits are nice, the cuts are beautiful, you know what I'm saying? His words are sinking, all this type of stuff that people look at and they're like, well, let me find out who that is and let me see how much they'll charge me. Now you're making a few dollars because someone was able to exploit your skill and show it to the world. You could just charge everybody $500, $750, to shoot a video, but that artist may only get 500 views. So what, what did that, it did that really $500,000 help you? It didn't because you didn't really get no kind of real attention. Nobody really saw your skill. So it's it's a way between what what the relationship is worth. You gotta make it make sense. Yeah, and I've done it on my side. I've done a collab with Bape on the apparel side. So Bape to me, looking at it as one of the biggest street brands, the percentage split that I did with them was different than a percentage split I would do with another company that's not as big. Because I took that and said, well. That's going to help me grow. That's going to put me in a, in a different light. It's going to also show people that Jet Life is an apparel brand 
is standing with the biggest brands in the country. You know, so of course I, I'm willing to take a lot. I'm not, I don't have to do 50 50 with you. I do 60 40, whatever, 7 30, whatever it is I'm going to do. If I feel like it's going to help my brand grow, you got to weigh, sometimes you got to weigh stuff outside of money. Everything going to have to be money. Sometimes it's, it's relationships that you can build that is worth way more than the money you could get. So always think about that with any, any deal that you do. What would this do for my career? Will it advance me or not? And if it advances you and you feel like it helps, then do what you got to do. Gotcha. So, you know, yeah, but right now, but I see, I'm like, currency is actually, I'm like, working with one, I'm like, big producer. And like, I kind of see, you know, oh, but that's going to be big for Jet Life in the city. Definitely. So, like, it will keep chiming, like, a little bit, I'm like, more about what's about to happen. Yeah. So, so currency, um, what's crazy was how the relationship even started. Currency did a song and he called the song Jermaine Dupri. Never had met Jermaine Dupri in his life. All he knew was he used to watch Jermaine Dupri on the videos and he respected Jermaine Dupri as an artist and he respected him as a producer and he just put a song out and like I said he entitled it Jermaine Dupri at which point of course Jet Life fans promoted the song and talked about it and tagged Jermaine and all that so Jermaine and Currency finally end up speaking I believe over Twitter or Instagram and it was like, oh, you know, let's let's work. So that went that conversation went on for a few months and we had never linked up, but they stayed connecting and, and talking about working. So eventually we decided like, look, we're gonna go to Atlanta, we're gonna go link up with Jermaine Dupree and we're gonna see what we could do. We got in the studio with him and the the relationship just grew. I think the 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 essence of them two being in a room together and the fun that they had together, I think it revived it revived both of them in a sense of currency felt like he was doing something new. He was doing something with a big producer that is if if you go in Jermaine's studio you'd be surprised like all the accolades he got on that wall. Like you got people don't understand, especially the younger generation, don't really know what Jermaine Dupree. They don't really know what he did. This guy toured with Michael Jackson, with Criss Cross. You know what I'm saying? This guy wrote numerous records, not just produced, wrote. He is a writer. He has got several uh, ASCAP writing awards. You know what I'm saying? He wrote stuff for Usher, you know, uh, Mary J. Blige. He's worked with all the top artists that you could think of. Uh, Mariah Carey, you know what I'm saying? Uh, outside of you know, he got he got plaques on over with Chingy, and you know it, it's crazy to think of when I went in there and looked at all these different plaques. I was like, this is some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? This is a man who at one point was gonna marry Janet Jackson. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta understand, this is really like we, you know, the younger generation on that really know who that is, and and we feel like. We need to shine light on these people. You know what I'm saying? We need to to understand like uh, the stuff that that these people have done and are yeah, still the doing. Yeah, they paying no homage. Like, nah, they don't. Somebody they don't, is kind of like you know. Nobody's telling them. them. Nobody's teaching them. Right. You know, I would listen to me. Funniest shit. Cut away real quick. A few days ago, uh, Jada Kiss came and visited the store. Jada Kiss is my guy. I've been jammed with Jadakiss before he put out his first solo album. Jadakiss came to the store, walked in. I'm upstairs. He downstairs. Uh, one of my employees called me and said, uh, Musa, this guy just walked in looking for you. So I said, who is he? So she said, I don't know. So I look out the window and I see the Sprinter van and I see one of Jadakiss guys who I'm familiar with outside so i like well, that's that's Kiss. i walked down i said uh you don't know who that was so she like no i was like that's Kiss. she was like who's Kiss? i said you serious right now she was like yeah i don't know who Kiss is 
And I was just like, shit. I just, we got to do better on teaching teaching our history music, of yeah. music. You know what I'm saying? Nothing against her not knowing. No, right. It's just, she just didn't know it because we never, we don't teach it. We don't, we don't. I always, they'll tell you, I'll, I'll sit in, in, in downstairs and I'll wear their ass out pulling up old Roxanne Shantae, LL Cool J. Yeah, I'll make y'all listen to, yeah. I'll make you listen to that shit. Rock Kim. Y'all better listen to this. You might have put a TV on. Yeah, just like, come on, y'all got to yeah. listen to this, man. Y'all got to hear what, what y'all hear. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm a it, bad person myself because I just watched something and I realized that I'm like Fat Joe. I was one, I'm like rapper, actually before, Big Pun. And I always thought yeah. Big Pun was the one who kind of put Fat Joe on. Like, oh, well, uh, so Nah, you know, so yeah, get, Fat Fat Joe was like the label. And he was the, yeah, Big Pun was his man. He put Big Pun on. Right. But you I, know what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah it, I thought it was on, you know, it was the other way around. The other so way like, around. you know, if you got to do research. People don't realize, like Busta Rhyme. Busta Rhyme still puts out music now. So some people, younger generation may have heard him. Not to say that they like his style of music because he doesn't, necessarily do what the younger generation is doing but they don't understand how long he's been rapping he was part of leaders of the new school you talking about 88 87 this is this is music back in the day you know what i'm saying so and as well as people don't know that a lot of new music comes from the oh, old music right. they'll play the record i'll play an old record and they'll tell me Oh, that's that's Lil Uzi beat. Like, no, that's not that's not Lil Uzi beat. Uzi Lil Uzi took that beat from here, or whoever produced it took it from here. You know what I'm saying? Not vice versa. You know, uh, that a lot of music. Like I said, we're we want to be musicians, but we don't study music. Right. But that's the fault of everybody. The schools are not teaching it. Maybe we should teach music. You know. Maybe we should have more than just uh, you part of the band at in high school. Maybe there should be a music class. Should be. You know, you sh they should teach that. I mean, I, I remember they had music class when I was in high school. You know. Yeah, but I mean, they don't do that. Yeah. But we should teach that. We should teach music. We should teach uh, not just jazz music. Teach everything. You imagine you have a class and you actually teaching all genres of of music that came from New Orleans. You know, you'll learn a lot from people from Baby, Master P. You'll learn a lot that they did that that if you knew the story, you'll be amazed that these people did this and really paved the way for other artists to follow. You know, you'll learn a lot from Jet Life and what we've done, you know. I don't know. A lot of people don't don't say nothing. You know, I always heard about um, the how to get the music out. We we did a deal that even record labels didn't believe. We did a deal with BitTorrent. And I don't know if everybody even knows or remembers what BitTorrent was. BitTorrent was a uh, file sharing site where people would basically. Everybody thought it was a piracy site that you would basically steal, download movies from. And BitTorrent didn't want that to be their name to fame. Like, we're not allowing people to piracy your, your, your intellectual property, your movie, your music, whatever. So we did a deal with BitTorrent that I got with them. I said, well, rather than people taking this music and, and ultimately downloading shared files that are illegally downloaded i'm gonna give y'all a mixtape that'll be exclusive to BitTorrent. i'm giving it to you so therefore it's not illegal and people could share it through their files and they're basically downloading free music that that tape that we put out on BitTorrent was downloaded 156 million times I told a major record label that. They told me, I don't believe you. I said, what you want me to show you, the numbers? Y'all just mad that I did it before you. Y'all big, smart motherfuckers with all this money didn't think to use this platform 
Once again, I didn't make a dollar off it because I gave it to them for free. But it was something that I felt was going to help us grow our music because this is downloaded across the world. People are downloading this music everywhere. So it built the music profile for that particular artist across the world. And it grew fans and it grew his father. Right. Because, you know, it was so many people do like interviews on currency and they'd be shocked. Like, how did he grow one, one, it one fan base like he did? Because, you know, it was only a few people kind of did it. Like, probably Tech Nine and a few other people. Yeah. But like, like, I don't know where his fans come from. Yeah. So, like, you know, it, like, thanks, like you just said, shows like y'all yeah, want to have, build different things. We have a hardcore fan base. We're grateful for that. We really have a fan base that follows our music and actually appreciates it, doesn't care. As long as Currency says it's coming out or Fendi says it's coming out, Isis says it's coming out, their fans go to it. We don't need the promotion of the radio. We don't need, we appreciate any support we get, but we don't need it to get a little buzz going. So we've been, We've been blessed to have that, that we have a fan base that really don't care what the outside world is doing. They're, they're what we call lifers. So our lifers are about our music. We announce a show, they coming. We selling out shows because they support what we do. They, we sell our clothes, they support what we do. So that has been a blessing for Jet Life, you know, um, so, uh, it, it, for you to build that like a real fan base and you're not just remembered by what your last hit was is a blessing because, you know, a lot of artists will put out a song and if you just enjoyed that song and really didn't believe in that artist, once that song is dead, you don't really care what that artist did. It's like kind of like a Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne can say anything he want on a record. Lil Wayne followers... Is gonna be on just like the Beehive. Beehive, I don't care what Beyonce said. Lil Uzi fans. He I, did he even say a verse on I, I want to rock? I don't think he did. Oh, I heard the first part. In. Damn, go so crazy. that's all I know yeah. is damn in my Lil Uzi voice. But that he's built that he's been blessed to uh, build a following of people that love him so much. That they just want to hear him on a record say anything. Thanks. It could be it's a big record, but it's not a rap record. You know what I'm saying? It's bigger than rap. You know what I'm saying? It's bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? So for you to be able to do that, you know, is is a blessing in its own because you're gonna be forever have life in this music game. That's why I think we sustained it so long. We built that fan base that we've been in it. If you think about it. Currency's been in, in, in music since the new No Limit from, what what is that, 03, 04, somewhere around there, you yeah. know, and we've grown like, we in 23, and he's still he's getting it, he's still, and, and only growing, don't get me wrong, he's, I could tell you now, he's bigger now than he was 10 years ago, his checks are bigger now, his show costs, his feature price all that is bigger now than it was 10 years ago. So that go to show you that his buzz is only growing because he's been able to sustain a youth in the game. And that's another problem that we have. We put ages on rappers. Hip hop is the only music scene that they put an age on a rapper. R&B could last forever. Anita Baker gonna always put out music and make money. You know what I'm saying? Beyonce is going to put out music forever and make money. And look at Tina Turner. Tina Turner is the old Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? She going to always make money. Rap, you hit a certain age or you too old. I mean, how, why? Right. Is it, I lost the I skill? I people saying, I'm like, Jay-Z too old and he's still... He, <laughs> they, they feel like Jay-Z is too old, but every time they drop a, 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 a record, he don't miss. He'll give you a whack verse. It's just not, he's not necessarily doing the the style of music that's that's popular, accepted today. 
But if you look at it as far as hip hop, he's he making great records. Lil Wayne, every I mean, it's it's crazy to say that people are not on Lil Wayne as as they should. But you can't ever say he's not dropping hell of a records. He rapping his ass off. You know, I could say it right now. Lil Wayne is the greatest rapper alive. I'ma say it on this side. I know this is gonna be the Jay Z and Lil Wayne debate, but I'm talking about rap. Lil Wayne is the greatest. So tell us, so tell us, I'm like, what's next for y'all? Continue to grow, more music, uh, building Fendi P and, and ISIS's career up, uh, you know, introducing them to, to a larger population and keep growing. Uh, they've been both doing a, a, a steady grind, you know, they both work hard in the studio, uh, building Jet Life as a label, bigger. Continuing to grow the apparel line, doing more collabs, doing more drops that people appreciate, keep putting out quality apparel. You know, um, we're doing uh, Jet Life Sports, you know, Stan, uh, my guys over that department. Uh, we're working with youth and, and AAU teams and high school students to, to teach them the education of sports. The business side of it. Oh, I'm I'm big on telling people business. You got to understand the business. Before you know anything, you got to know the business. Because if you don't know the business, you know what I'm saying? What do you know? You know, you, you can't advance not knowing. The first thing to do is educate yourself on whatever career choices you have. Educate. You know what I'm saying? So we're doing that side of it. We're still trying to do as many community activities that we feel make sense on our end. You know what I'm saying? You know, Mac Main will tell you we supported them. Uh, they won a championship that year. We built out a locker room for them. Uh, we got to do something over there by, by Landry because uh, one of our big athletes, uh, Lamar Peters, went there, and he, he definitely wants to support his uh, alma mater. You know, so we, we want to continue to grow that, continue to grow community, show at least New Orleans, if we don't show nothing else, that – Hip hop is not based on uh, trouble and, and violence and all that. That you can actually have a, a hip hop label that the, the community loves, that the that shows you know appreciation of the community. Just like you know, Cash Money comes and does their turkey drive and and does different stuff. We want to continue to grow in our city. Like I told you, we love our city. We love New Orleans. We want to make sure that we here to support in every way possible. So just to continue to grow on all that, like I said, just do do bigger things and keep growing. We ain't, we ain't nowhere near satisfied or, or, or content in where we at. You know, we want to be, continue to grow and be bigger. That's that's the main thing in all facets. Gotcha. And also, oh, but last but not least, tell everyone, basically, I mean, what can they find you on social media and just everywhere? Social media, all social media platforms are going to be the same. Musa504, that's M-O-U-S-A 504. Uh, you're going to always find me in the streets of New Orleans. You know, I like to attend different events. I, I, I go to different parties, different, you know. I like to support everything on all sides of it. So, you you know, you, you'll see me on the local New Orleans streets. I'm around, you know. Uh catch me on the TV sometimes too when we at them Pelicans games. Megan scream N-O-L-A-Z-I-N-E make them S-C-R-E-A-M scream Nola Z make them scream you heard me.